Ah, it seems like just yesterday Archeria released their Mini Lab Mark II, and it quickly became one of my favorite Mini MIDI controllers. Solid construction, pretty good DAW and software integration, but then some years went by. Novation released their Launch Key Mark III. Akai released the MPK Mini Mark III. Where is the Archeria Mini Lab Mark III? It's right here. What's going on everybody? My name is Tejo. Welcome back to the Lo-Fi Loft. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Archuria Mini Lab Mark III. We're going to check out what's new on the controller, the things I like, the things I don't like, and whether or not I think you should buy it. Real quick, important to note, this video is not sponsored. Archuria has been a great partner for the channel uh, since the early days, and they sent along this Mini Lab 3 for review, but they don't have final say over the video, and there's no money being exchanged. So, take that for what it is. <laughs> This is, is very exciting. I've waited a long time for this. Let's get the Mini Lab 3 out of the box. That's always nerve wracking. And here she is, the Mini Lab 3. A beautiful updated design, and maybe actually the best way to start this video is to compare it to the previous Mini Lab Mark II. Oh, let's not use this one. Yes, the previous Mini Lab Mark II. So, what are the major differences here between the last iteration and this new Minilab 3. Well, actually one thing you probably can't tell from the video, but the Minilab 3 is much, much lighter in comparison to the Minilab Mark II. And I think a lot of that comes down to this metal bottom piece on the Minilab Mark II. Minilab 3 is a mostly rigid plastic construction, and I do want to note that the packaging for the Minilab 3 is 100% recycled materials, and the Minilab 3 is actually made with a minimum of 50% recycled materials. So that's fantastic. Shout out to Archeria for that. So it is a bit lighter, which is better for travel. I don't think this means the build quality is bad. I just might take a little more caution when traveling with the Minilab, simply just based on the weight. Left panel here looks pretty similar with a pitch bend and modulation ribbon. That's the same on each octave up and down. On the Minilab 3, we'll have a shift functionality to transpose the keyboard here on the octave keys. Of course, we've got our shift button. And here we've got a hold or a chord functionality we'll talk about in a minute. Whereas on the old Minilab Mark II, we used that to change pad banks. The big difference here is on the Mark II, we had 16 encoders. Two were used for navigation, while the others were used for adjusting parameters. Here we only have eight. And I'm gonna get into how the Minilab 3 utilizes those eight encoders in a bit. Uh, but I will also note that these travel quite freely here on the Mark II, a bit more resistance on the Mark III. But again, they are endless encoders. And then, though we have less encoders, we have the addition of these four faders, which I actually kind of like this. The implementation for the Ableton Live integration is actually really well done, and I just like to have the variety of controls on my faders. It gives some degree of separation, so if you're planning a performance or something, you have some differentiation between between whatever you have mapped here and whatever you have mapped here. That is also to note here on the Minilab 3, we've got a tiny little screen as well as this encoder here, which is navigational. This has a little bit of a click feeling on it, so you can tell as you're scrolling through maybe presets or different parameters. Eight pads here. It does feel like these pads are slightly different, perhaps upgraded. I haven't tried them yet. And right here on the Minilab 3, we can see that there's different shift functionality built in to these pads, which we'll get into when we plug the keyboard in. Now on the back on the Mark II, we simply had a USB port and a sustain port. On the Minilab 3, however, we've got USB-C, which I'm so happy to see here. Uh, we've got a pedal port, which is labeled control because we can actually edit this to be sustain, expression, or some foot controller that you can map. And we also have five pin MIDI out. This is fantastic. We can control hardware synths with the Minilab 3. And the sort of iconic wood paneling on the side that the previous Minilabs have had, we've still got that present here. And actually there's even a bit more texture on this version. It's very hard to see on camera, but it's definitely an upgrade from the Mark II. So with that comparison out of the way, let's go ahead and plug in the Minilab 3 and see what we can do with this thing. 
All right, so it's worth noting here that the Mini Lab 3 does come with a pretty nice USB-C cable uh, with a right angle and everything, but I've got a USB-C cable already plugged into my hub situation here, so I'm just gonna use that. As we plug in the device, we're gonna see the RGB pads light up, and our screen here says Archuria, indicating that we are in uh, control mode for Archuria software like Analog Lab. And that's one of the big advantages of having an Archuria controller is since they make such amazing synths and plugins and sounds, you get a little bit better control over those sounds with an Archuria controller like the Minilab 3. So for instance, in Analog Lab here, You notice that I get instant control over this sound using the macro knobs, but holding shift allows me to navigate around the preset list. Clicking in allows me to change presets. And we can essentially navigate around the preset menu of Analog Lab. While we've got this cool electric piano sound loaded up, let's talk about what else we can do with these keys and some of the shift functionality here on the pads. If I hold shift and ARP, the first pad, that of course engages our arpeggiator. There is a tap tempo here. And we also have this hold function, which functions like you might expect a hold function to function on our arpeggiator. We don't have to press the keys to keep the sequence going. And you noticed as I started playing other notes, it stopped the previous notes and started with the new notes I started playing and held them. We don't have to be in the arpeggiator for this to work, actually. We can use this as a pseudo sustain. which is pretty useful for on the go when you don't actually have a sustain pedal. We've also got a chord function, shift and push the hold button, which engages chord mode. Now when we play a single note, it will play a chord. And we can change those chords if we do shift, hold and play a selection of notes. When both hold and chord are engaged, we get this cool sort of flash between white and blue. Combine that with the arpeggiator. And we can start having a lot of fun. Note if we long press shift in this ARP pad, we can change the different settings of the arpeggiator that you'd come to expect, like the swing, uh, the gate, the rate, etc. And although we can click and navigate around these settings with this control knob here, and it'll be reflected on the screen, the eight macros also give us control over each of these settings. So that's pretty great hands-on control with the arpeggiator built right into the keyboard and with Archuria's own software, but what about our DAW? Well, if I hold shift and program, we will see the word DAW here right on the screen. So my DAW of choice is Ableton Live, and now that we're in DAW mode, Archuria has actually done a great job of stepping up the DAW control from the previous Minilab Mark II. There are a couple ways we can use the Minilab with Live. First of all, in session view, we're able to scroll through scenes by just turning this control knob, and a click of that control knob will actually launch the scene. So that's handy. If we hold shift, we will scan between the different tracks, and that's actually the same in both session and arrangement view. And it's also helpful because if you scan between tracks and you press the navigation knob, we'll now arm that track.
The pads also give us control over session view. So this pad is illuminated right here and that's because that track is armed for recording and I can record into a clip slot and launch those clips. And whether it's recording, playing, or stopped, the color will change. Of course, the other way we can use the pads is to play drums. And these pads do feel pretty good. I do wish they were a bit more sensitive though. As you can see, or maybe you can't see, I'm applying a fair amount of what I think is even pressure here at, at sort of a medium to light tap and they're not all registering. So as long as I'm deliberate, I won't miss a hit, but I can't get some of those softer gestures in. But that's not all for these pads. If we hold shift, we can also get some transport control. We can turn loop on and off. We can stop the project. We can play. And they've done a good job of this record button. While I'm in session mode, it controls session record. However, if I hit tab and go into arrangement, it will control the arrangement record. So that's really good. There's also a tap tempo button, which is fine. I can see it being used well for like external gear and the arpeggiator. However, uh, I don't really use it that much when I'm working in the DAW. I would much rather have a metronome on and off button. So when I'm either having to play with a metronome or I just want to quickly turn it on or off, uh, that would have been, a, I think, a better use for this button rather than dedicated tap tempo. But how about the knobs and the faders? Well, the knobs behave as you might expect them to behave, where they take over the macros of the on-screen selected instrument. We see the blue hand here, that means our controller is controlling it. And the faders, actually, this is a great use of the fader. Whatever track is selected, we will have control over the volume, the send A, send B, and the panning. And don't forget that we can navigate between tracks. And since track two is now selected, I'm controlling those parameters for track two. So there's very thoughtful integration here, and I can definitely say it's an upgrade from the previous Minilab Mark II uh, with Ableton Live specifically. I know they're supporting other DAWs as well, and if they put the same thought uh, into their control surface that they did for Ableton Live, I'm sure they did it for other DAWs as well. There's one last thing to check out, and that is, of course, the MIDI out on the back. So let's control a synth with our new Minilab 3. Sorry for the interruption real quick. I hope you're enjoying this video. If you're liking the vibe, please take a minute to just give this video a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support this channel, go ahead and click the join button. We've got an amazing community over on Discord. You'll get access to that exclusive server along with members only content, like really deep workshops, uh, some sample packs, etc. It's a great way to support the channel and get something for yourself. All right, thanks. Anyway, back to the video. All right, let's grab our little handy dandy lemon drop nano box synth. You all know that this is one of my favorite little synths. I love the sounds that you can make with this thing. I've got a video on it. Let's go ahead and plug this thing into the mini lab. So of course, yes, don't forget full five pin MIDI out here, though the lemon drop doesn't have five pin MIDI and We are controlling a synth with our mini lab. That's pretty awesome. Worth noting that depending on your synth, uh, holding shift and pressing one of these numbered keys here will change the MIDI channel. Uh, and that our arpeggiator will work as well. Along with hold mode, and let's see if chord mode does work. Even better. This is fantastic. I love that I'm able to control an external synth uh, with a controller as great as the Minilab 3.
And with the built-in arpeggiator, the hold mode, and the chord mode, it makes it a great controller for hardware, or at least for me. I'm not super into hardware synths or anything. I might do very minimal setups at times. So having a small controller that can do a little bit more than just play notes is pretty clutch. But what about for you? Should you pick up a Minilab 3? I have some thoughts. All right, so should you buy the Minilab 3? And it comes down to a few things. First of all, I'll say, I really like this controller. I could actually see this potentially becoming my main controller, whether it's living on my desk or whether it's taking it out on the road. And why is that? First of all, the DAW integration, that's number one for me. It's not good enough just to be able to play uh, drums and keys on a controller. I want to be able to navigate around my DAW. And at the very least, I wanna be able to punch in, punch out of recording and control some basic parameters. And what they've done with the faders here is so much smarter than what I've seen other controllers do. I don't want eight faders that control the eight volumes. I want to control the current sound that I'm on. I'm never going to put the time into thinking like, oh, track five over here, boom unless I'm doing like a mapped performance or something. So on the Minilab 3, you always know whatever track you have selected, you're controlling that with the faders. So I think that that's really, really smart. The addition of the little screen is nice. It reads out what you're controlling on the screen and you can dive into deeper settings and just get a more clear idea of what you're actually doing with the controller. They knocked it out of the park with adding that tiny little screen and MIDI out. I've been getting into more and more uh, external synths, and if I'm traveling or something and I wanna just bring one controller, uh, it's hard to commit to not bring a controller with MIDI out, especially if I wanna bring a little synth like the Lemon Drop. But for you, what about for you and all the other MIDI controllers out there on the market? Well, one of the things I did knock was the pads on the Mini Lab. They are still not up to snuff with something like uh, an MPK Mini. And Akai has maybe a little unfair advantage here. They've been putting MPC pads pads into their mini MIDI keyboards. So if pads are the most important to you, you might want to go with something like this, but no MIDI out. The DAW control is, is basically non-existent. Arpeggiator doesn't automatically sync with your DAW. It's lacking a lot of things. And I'll say the only thing it has up on the Mini Lab 3 are the quality of the pads. If I harp so much on DAW control, I can't help but mention the Launch Key Mini because of course this is literally made for uh, Ableton Live. And they've also got the FL key, which is made for FL Studio. And I'm not sure about the integration on the Mini Lab 3. The Launch Key Mini Mark 3 has good pads. They are also smaller and there's two rows of them. So there's a trade-off and an advantage there. Good DAW control as well on the Launch Key Mini Mark III, and it even is just a bit smaller. I think thinner, and just the overall footprint is smaller. It's got a MIDI out on the back. It's also got a sustain port. And another thing I think the Launch Key Mini does slightly better than the Mini Lab is right on the keys, instead of being labeled with the MIDI channels, being able to switch MIDI channels here, you can change things for the arpeggiator by holding shift and going to quarter note, or hold, holding shift and going to rhythm or octave. And I actually kind of like that instead of having, have, and I actually kind of like that for more on the fly performances instead of having to dial it in on the screen because then you're like going into a menu, navigating around it, whereas this is just shift, boom, change the rate. Mm, so there's a, a few legs up there on the Launch Key Mini Mark III. So it might actually come down to aesthetic and design. Like, which one do you prefer? Mini Lab 3 has got a beautiful design. And I also think it handles some of the DAW control a little bit better with the faders and the knobs. But ultimately, I cannot stress this enough. It absolutely does not matter what MIDI controller you choose. As long as you choose one and start making music, you're never gonna have the uh, running list with all the check boxes where one gets a perfect A plus and the other one got an A minus. So we're gonna go with the A plus. It doesn't work like that. We're at a time where all the companies are putting in a lot of great effort to make great controllers and they all do certain things better than the other. So there is no perfect controller. Go with your gut, go with the one that can, you connect with the most. And it could be as arbitrary as I like that that has a uh, clean white design and wood paneling. And that's totally valid too. So there'll be more from me and the Mini Lab 3 on this channel for sure. So don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a like if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment and let me know what you think about the Mini Lab 3 if you're thinking about picking one up. 
And I just wanna say we have a really cool community over here. If you wanna support the channel and hit that join button down below, you will get access to our Discord server as well as members only video content. We have really deep uh, members only workshops and members also get access to free sample packs. Also join for a live stream sometimes, they're a lot of fun. That's gonna be it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Tatro with the Mini Lab 3. Have a good one.